Okay, I think we're good. So today we are going to take a look at X-Plane combined with uh, Plan G. I just recently found out about this one and um, it's pretty dang cool. Uh, right now what we're looking at here, this is Plan G. It is a VFR navigation uh, uh, tool for, for planning your VFR flights. Um, I don't know a whole lot about VFR, but this has really helped in the planning and getting uh, radio frequencies and the, the other pieces that you need to, to make that happen. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out just by kind of jumping in. I've got it currently up and running and connected to X-Plane, which... Uh, see here uh, explain is currently running and we are at the airport in our uh, oh what is this guy again I always forget what he is he's a beachcraft um, love this plane uh, it's very very much a predominantly VFR oriented plane. I don't believe it actually has a flight director in it. Um, if it does have a flight director, I don't know where they've hidden the switch. So as far as I'm concerned, no flight director. Uh, this is uh, but it's a wonderful plane. Um, lots of fun to lots of fun to fly. Nice snappy little plane. Yeah, you get some pretty good speeds going. So, so switching back over here, we have um, our starting position. We are currently connected to uh, to X plane at the moment. Uh, we can connect and disconnect as we need to, and we are going to start our flight path here by simply right-clicking on the airport where we're at and say start flight plan at KHQM. Um, now, like I said, bear with me. I'm completely a noob at this. I barely understand what I'm doing. Uh, if it wasn't for some uh, great videos uh, on the net uh, showing how this all works, I honestly wouldn't have the slightest clue right now. I'm still in the process of learning and pulling information together and really trying to get a feel for how do you do all this. Uh, I love flight simulations. They are they can be very complex, um, very intellectually challenging. I, I just really, really enjoy it. So uh, we're going to start out here and See, we're going to be leaving the airport going this direction here. Now, this, these guys up here, they are non-directional beacons. Essentially, if I understand right, I can't plot any kind of course based on it easily, but I can plot a course to it. So I'm going to start out by adding that one to my flight plan. So you can see here, we're going to leave. Uh, uh, we're going to leave Bowerman Airport. Uh, tiny little runway. Uh, actually finished a flight landing on it. Uh, kind of getting prepared for this video, and we are going to be leaving and heading at uh, leaving at a heading of 46 degrees, and that should take us out to Shelton. Uh, Looks like we got lots of little islands here. We're gonna put it's gonna put us up around about where uh, around about in the Seattle area, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, from Shelton, um, we'll head up to uh, non-directional beacon C A N. Uh, there are codes for these things. I don't know what they are. Um, that. Uh, as far as I, I'm really, really bad at the naming. There's, there's fancy letters and stuff. And like I said, I, I'm new. Eventually, I want to get confident enough with the terminology that I can start doing a VATSIM, which is 
where you have live air traffic controllers run by other hobbyists um, also running in the simulator. Uh, it should be pretty cool. Um, and then for grins, I think. quite sure how to pull in at this airport here, but but at Bremerton National looks like it's got a runway. I believe there's a way I can get a diagram here. Yeah. It's got a runway. It's heading in this direction here. It looks like it's also got a IFR, which I think if we had a different aircraft we could use that, but I don't know if we can. 111.1 think we can do is use this non-directional beacon to get us up there. So we're going to try that. So we'll set the non-directional beacon as our next waypoint. And then we'll set the airport as our destination. So if I did that right, what I should have here is my distances and my headings, and here's my frequencies. I hope I know how to do this. I don't think I've tuned in an NDB before. may have not have been the best example, but this will be a nice short one. Let's see what happens. And I think that first one is going to be too far off too, too far off for us to get a fix. I'm not sure. But it's 46 degrees. minutes out, so we should be able to find it easy enough. So another nice thing you can do in this program is if you right click on any of your um, any of your waypoints, you can tell it to set the NBD frequency on the ADF radio or alternately, if you're looking at a um, VOR, you can right click on that and actually set your VOR frequency on your nav radio. So with that one set, if we go take a look inside the plane, what we should see is, there it is, ADF-1 is set to 348, and there's ADF-1. Well, I think this aircraft only has an a, a single ADF. I'm not entirely sure what ADF stands for, but I know it's the piece that I'm looking at. I hope to actually get a little more, a little better educated on this as time goes on. So, uh, we have the ADF set. We can move our ADF, I think. No, why? Huh. I'm not sure why it's even given us that option. I'm probably messing something up. 
three four eight. Okay, so we're heading to 348 at a direction of 046. So I'm going to get this guy set up at 046. No, we don't have to set that to 046. I'm thinking about it. Because that's 046 right there. That's going to take us where we want to be. We want to set it to the one after that. So we can be heading in the right direction. Which is 028. more or less until we can get our radios programmed correctly. And I think we're ready for takeoff. Let's give this a shot. This is probably going to go very horribly. Get is direction. 